Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tamika. This is Library of Tomes where I talk to you about all the bookish things going on in my life. And today I am bringing you a very fun video. It is my 2020 favorite books and we are just so happy that we had such a good reading year. I say we, it's only me. It's just, it's just me over here. I am very happy that I had a really good reading year. Um, in 2020, I read 126 things. There were some manga in there and there was also some other things like um, short stories, novellas, things like that. Um, obviously books because that's what I read. What am I talking about? Am I just like chaotic today apparently I don't know but anyway I read 126 things I am very excited to talk about them with you all um today I'm going to be talking about my favorite ones let's talk about my favorite books of 2020 and let's start with those romances okay so we're going to start off where no one is no one is surprised absolutely no one is shocked that this was coming no one was like oh my god Tamika is gonna include a Brianna Hale on this list? Of course not, because why would we be? So, The Black Fox by Brianna Hale is one of the books that I'm putting on my favorite books of 2020. So listen, you all knew this was coming. You knew a Brianna Hale was going to make it onto my favorites list for 2020. Y'all didn't know which one. <laughs> you probably figured it out by the end of the year, but y'all didn't know which one. So, this book in particular came out in 2020. It also was one of my favorites that I read from Brianna in 2020. This is a Daddy King Zorro retelling. It is a novella. It is only 25,000 words. It is one of the best books I read all year. I loved it so freaking much. So listen, here's the thing. When I read this originally, I gave it a four and a half star. I was like, this is so close to a five star, but Upon reflection, at the end of the year, this is definitely a five-star read. This is one of my favorite books. This is a Zorro retelling. This has cheating in it. This is where the most shocking part of all this comes in. This book has cheating in it. It is one of the tropes that I absolutely despise. I will not read books with that. I end up usually giving it a one star because I just can't get behind the motives of the characters or the motive of the story. But with this one, it was completely different. I was able to completely let myself enjoy this story. I was so worried in the beginning of this that I was not going to like it because of the cheating aspect. I fully expected going into this book I was going to give it a one or a two star. But, and here's the but, I didn't because this story is justified with the cheating and I never say that but there's a loveless marriage here. The hero is Zarkarius did not marry this woman because he loves her. They have no real relationship. Like in this story really there is no relationship between him and the stepmother of this stepdaughter he's falling for. And I think that's why I can get behind it because there is no emotional cheating happening here. There's no physical, I mean there's physical cheating but like this relationship is basically a marriage of convenience with nothing in it. So I could definitely get behind this one. So Zarkarius falls in love with his stepdaughter Lolita. Lolita cannot stand him and they have a very interesting relationship. They hate each other but really he is like really into her and he knows that he is the Black Fox and she doesn't and she loves the Black Fox. So she has a relationship with the Black Fox and she has to find out that it's actually her stepfather who she has no interest in whatsoever. Like she can't stand him. It's beautiful. I love it so much. Daddy kink age gaps, step family, taboo. I love it. I love it so freaking much. I love this book. I'm not going to ramble about it too much more. I want a full book on Zarkarius because I just love him that much. He is like amazing. And the steamy scenes in this are off the charts. Absolutely wonderful. Like, uh, and the formatting on just this paperback, beautiful. I love it so much. I could not... I had to do Brianna first. You all knew this was happening. You just knew it. Next up, I don't have physical copies of these ones, but it's The Devil and The Devil's Advocate by Ashley Jade. This one is a little hard for me to explain, so I'm going to explain it kind of quickly with a synopsis and then just tell you like why I love it because it's absolutely bonkers and crazy and that is the entire reason I love it. So this is a dark romance. This follows Cain, Eden, and Damien. Now hear me out. Eden is Cain's stepdaughter. 
he married her mother her mother passes away so the entire world thinks that they are sleeping together and they have a relationship she is just turned 18 in the story and he gets really defensive like he's like absolutely not we are not sleeping together but they do have sexual attraction to each other because they have done something in the past but it's not like sex like they've ever actually had sex at this point when you're going into the story but they want to so Damien is someone from Kane's past who is trying to essentially get revenge and ruin Kane. Uh, and you were finding out over the course of this entire duet who is, uh, who, why they have a relationship, why they hate each other, and Eden is a pawn in the middle of all of it. So this story is absolutely bonkers. It is dual timelines. It is telling you what happened in their past. There is like so much there's so much going on in this this is a dark romance this oh it's it is insane so obviously you're gonna have a lot of different triggers going into this there's like mental health triggers there is um some anxiety rep representation in here there is some obviously grief loss you know loss of the loved one uh, i think i already said that there is non-consensual water sports there is a uh, very graphic graphic sex um there is just just it's it's dark it is a lot so going into this i want you to know this book is dark this book is a lot and i i really recommend it i absolutely loved it it was a wild absolutely insane ride that i could not look away from i read it in two days the entire duet and i want you to read it i want you to read it and i want you to love it it is absolutely amazing it is an age gap i i really recommend this i don't know how to talk about this book without spoiling it because there's so much going on in it you just have to go check it out so next up we have the takeover by tl swan now listen i know this book has went around booktube a lot lately and i want to first say this i read the stopover in february and i thought it was making my favorites list this year i really did i thought this book is going to be a favorite book of this year and then i read the takeover and nothing has compared to it like when it comes to that book and the take like the stopover the takeover and stopover gosh can't even get the words right now that those two books in that series it doesn't even compare because i loved the takeover so much more so the takeover is following tristan and claire they are both at the heads of like media companies so claire's late husband has passed away and she is essentially running this media company her husband started so that she can pass it along to her three sons uh tristan is a rival he's a rival of another media company and he is trying to buy her out they have a weekend retreat where they end up having a one night stand they give into their attraction to one another they have a full weekend together and then they go back to normal and then she's like absolutely not like like we can't have anything i have three kids like this it's not just me that you have to be with if you want to be with me you have to also be with my three children and tristan decides all right hit me with your best shot and he comes at her and he's like i want i want to do this i want to pursue you and he continues to try to pursue her and in the process wins the heart of her three children and you know it is absolutely amazing watching him try to win the children over and like the things he does to try to like get them to approve of him and fall in love with him as well as make her fall in love with him it is so beautiful obviously there's a grief trigger warning here because she is still grieving the loss of her husband and that is a really tragic thing that she and her children have to uh deal with during the story but i love this book so much 20 out of 10 um i i loved it so much i want to re-listen to i want to read it again but i want to listen to it on audio because i just i love tristan i want all of the characters in the series to get books like all the brothers and then all of the kids the brothers have like that's all i want <laughs> oh listen when i said i wanted to read sapphic romances in 2020 i only got to one but let me tell you about this one that i did read because it was absolutely beautiful so anyone but her by erica lee is so freaking cute so we have reagan who is an out of the closet lesbian who lives with her best friend jamie jamie is a closeted gay man he is gay uh because they don't live in like the conservative area he grew up in but when he goes home like his family doesn't know so he is technically still in the closet to his family but like out in the other parts of the world he is an openly gay man um and then we have charlie who reagan thinks is uh his brother so jamie and reagan have to go home for his family reunion his family doesn't know he's gay he thinks that he is dating reagan and that reagan and him have like a committed relationship and they're living together and they're gonna get married and whatever and whatever and it is absolutely so funny because 
she goes home not expecting to meet Charlie, her his sister. She's expecting to meet Charlie, her, his brother. And it is so adorable because Charlie is also a closeted gay woman. And she has to pretend that she's straight around her family and her brother doesn't even know she's gay. Like, none of the family know that either of these siblings are gay. And it is so cute watching Reagan be like, is she into me? Like, I don't know if it's like she's into me. Like, am I reading into this? And then Charlie being like, I'm into her. <laughs> like, it is so cute watching them like, kind of like tiptoe around each other because they're both really attracted to one another. And like, they are like trying to like tell the other one without tell the other one. And then they have a relationship and the relationship is so cute. And I just, I just loved it. It was so freaking cute. And like they have to deal with a situation that like is really unfortunate where the two people who want to be together, one of them is not out to their family and like they're like in a very like toxic anti-LGBT family situation. Uh, and I just, I loved seeing Charlie be able to get a happily ever after. It was just adorable and beautiful and I loved it. And this is one of my favorite books of the year obviously it's on the list. So next up on this list is obviously a uh, long shot by Kennedy Ryan. I read this for reading sports romances for the first time back in April. This is a basketball romance. This follows August and Iris. They meet at a, I don't remember how they meet, but they meet like before a game or something because she's dating this guy who plays for this one basketball team and August plays for this other basketball team and they are rivals. And he has no idea that she is dating his rival. Um, and then they have kind of, it's not like a misconnection, but she has a boyfriend, so like nothing can really happen, but they have an immediate interest in one another. Um, and Iris is, she gets pregnant. Uh, her boyfriend gets her pregnant and it is, I, I'm assuming it was intentional. I don't know if we ever come out and say if it's for sure intentional. It's been a little bit since I read it, obviously. She gets into this very abusive, very toxic relationship and she ends up marrying her husband or the guy who got her pregnant and he is abusive. And when I say abusive, I don't just mean like he's emotionally abusive. I mean, he is beating her, he is raping her, he is forcing her away from everyone. She, he is using their child against her, like, like to the fullest extent, like he is hurting her daily. Um, and she is absolutely broken down uh, by this relationship and it's so beautiful because you you have no idea how her and August are going to get this HEA and they do so um this is a very heavy one this is a very hard hitting one I love this book I think I cried a couple times reading this it, it was it gave me a lot of anxiety going into this I want you to like know that going in there are a lot of triggers for this and this is a hard hitting one so uh just know going in. This is hard, but it is so beautiful and I really recommend reading it. My camera battery died, so if there's an angle shift, I apologize. However, we need to talk about the next book on my favorites list, which again, I don't really think will be as shocking to anyone as it was not shocking to me as I put it on the list. And that book is Whispers in the Dark by Letitia Newton. Now listen, this book is so so good. Before I tell you about this book, I'm gonna have to tell you the trigger warnings because I don't even want to give you the synopsis before I tell you how messed up this book is. We've got rape, we've got sodomy, we have forced miscarriage, we have uh, human experimentation. I'm gonna say not necessarily, but kind of. There is a lot of body modification as in um, not like a nose ring or a tattoo, but body modification as in carving things into people and then burning their skin so that, you know, it heals a scar. There is uh, sodomy on a man and a woman, just to be clear. There is also, uh, what else is in here? A lot. Kidnapping. <laughs> That's a big one. Uh, so here, this is the story. This follows Alana, who is kidnapped when she's like 18. She's like going to school. She's like kidnapped off the street and she's taken in by this dude who uh, wants her to be one of his toys. He's calling women toys. He doesn't really see them as people. He sees them as like objects for his own pleasure and sick twisted games. Uh, so he tortures people and he originally gets Alana for his son who he's trying to train to also become just like him. Uh, his name is Jacob. So what ends up happening is in the story, Alana and Jacob are supposed to form this relationship and they actually do form a relationship, but 
uh, he, Jacob is not supposed to actually fall in love with her and his dad takes Alana away because he doesn't think she is ready to be with her and yeah it is absolutely insane. This story is absolutely bonkers and here's the thing she is taken captive twice so uh I'm not gonna say too much because I feel like I spoil it a lot when I talk about it but this has an insane situation in the second half of the book where uh, things are absolutely bonkers and there is a serial killer somewhere and there is serial killers in the top front technically too. I mean it is absolutely insane. There's serial killers in here. There is like absolutely bonkers bonkers things and this story is just so good. <laughs> um, this kind of gave me like a horror movie with an HEA and like I've never known that's what I wanted in a book until I got this book. So I need every horror story with an HEA you could ever possibly find. I need them. That is like the new thing that I want. Um, and I loved this. This is absolutely crazy. If you like horror movies, if you like stuff that's absolutely messed up, give this book a shot. It's kind of hard to read at times, but it is so good. It is so dark and I can't stop talking about it. I don't think I will ever stop talking about it. I absolutely love the story and I'm so happy we picked this for Taboo Book Club. It was so so good and it was honestly, it is not the darkest story I've ever read but dark is subjective but this is one of the darker, one of the darkest books I've ever consumed and it was amazing and I was here for it every second of it. So stay with with that, take that for what you will, check it out if you want to. I obviously say to please check it out because I love it. So next up we have Eleanor and Gray by Brittany C. Cherry. Now obviously this follows Eleanor and Gray. Uh, I love the story. This is is such a beautiful beautiful story. This is following Eleanor and Gray who had a childhood uh, relationship. They were very, very good friends when they were kids. He helped her through grief and it was, it was beautiful. She is struggling with her mom who is having, who has cancer and he has just had someone in his life, uh, pass away from, I think it was cancer too. Um, they leaned on each other. They become really good friends and they end up falling in love as their kids, but they can't actually be together because of circumstances, because, uh, she ends up having to move and they aren't able to be around each other and their story is so believable because when you're a kid and you fall in love with someone like you are really up to like the circumstances that you were just in like with your family. If your family moves like you have to go with them like you're a child you can't be on your own. Um, so their story was so believable because they loved each other and they cared for each other so much but there was nothing they could do. Their circumstances were just out of their control um, and their fading apart was actually like so realistic and like I was so able to get behind it because it is literally what just happens to people. Like they just stop communicating, they just stop talking to each other. Like they just stop making time to like talk to one another because they're busy and like it is absolutely so believable and I loved I loved watching it. I loved seeing the fade apart so they can come back together. Uh, so this is a second chance I guess technically but I don't really consider it one. I consider it more of like a childhood friends to lovers and also a nanny romance because she ends up becoming his nanny and I just absolutely love the story. I love the kids in this. I loved Grey. I loved Eleanor. It's such a good story. I don't really know how to talk about this book in, in any more depth than I just did. I just, I love this book and I really want everyone to read it. It is so freaking good. And the fact that it took me so long to read Britney C. Cherry is a disservice because it was so, so good. So the next book that I want to talk about is Reasonable Doubt by Whitney G. I love this story. Oh my God. Okay. So listen, hear me out here. This one, I did not think I was going to like it. It is an age gap. It is an office romance. And I am not really interested in law or lawyers or anything like that, but listen to this premise. So we have this girl who starts an account on this website for lawyers. Lawyers are able to like go in and ask questions about like their cases or, or whatever they have questions about. Her mom is a lawyer. So she takes her mom's login and makes an account so that she can talk to people to get help with her homework, right? And this girl starts talking to this dude on here and like they actually form a friendship and form a like type of relationship and he wants to be with her like not romantically but he wants to be with her 
and she's like no because she's lied about her age she's lied about how like who she is she's lied about all of these different things and she goes into an interview to be an intern at this a law like this law firm and he's like wow that just sounds really familiar because she asks him a question before the interview starts and she uses his answer he gives her and he's like that's her and he knows that she has a fake identity. He knows that she is who they've been he's been talking to, but she has no idea like what's going on. And it's absolutely so good. Oh my god, I read it in like a day. It was like a three part serial. It was so so good. Like I loved it so much. And like the mom and like the family is like so against her like doing ballet because she like she's a double major ballet and like pre law. I think it's so good. It is such a good book. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't even know how to like talk about it without just just being like oh my god is so good but like Whitney G just she really crafted this story and these characters were just so freaking amazing and like they worked so well together their chemistry was amazing and like the hate to love aspect to them falling actually falling in love oh my god freaking adorable loved it 20 out of 10 uh need it like Again, I want to read it again. It was so, so good. So this one is another that doubled from my wildest books, but I just could not not put this on here. This book broke a reading slump for me. This entire series did, but I'm only going to mention the first book, but just know when I talk about it, I'm talking about the entire series. So The Queen Takes Night, The House of Isidore, their Vampire Queen series, this book, this story, this series is so good. Like, listen, this book took my 2020 and was like, I know your 2020 sucked. Here you go. Here's a present. So like this book was so insane. This is a paranormal vampire romance about this half human girl or she thinks she's human. This human girl. So she believes. And she is like had her entire life. She's been followed by monsters. And she is in this like situation where she's on the run all the time and she meets these two men who want to save her and they are her blood. She finds out she is a vampire but not only is she a vampire she is a vampire queen and she has to take men as her blood. These vampires um, it's not just men it's men and women it's it's people it's the vampires in general. Uh, she takes them as her blood they become like her army and she has to go and try to do vampire queen things and like deal with the politics of a vamp being a vampire queen and like also they have a lot of orgies and it is absolutely insane this is a polyamorous story this she has multiple multiple partners I think there is like up to 10 in her nest it's so amazing I don't again I don't know how to talk about this series I don't know how to talk about any of this in like any coherent way other than I freaking loved this I flew through them I read the entire series in a week it was so good I really recommend you check it out I have pushed this on everyone uh it's vampire smut it is that is what it is it is vampire smut and I loved it it is so good please go read it Please, absolutely please go read it. So next we're going to talk about my second favorite book of the year, which again, not going to be a shocker, but it is a shocker for who I am. That is Highland Spitfire by Mary Wine. So listen, this one is not going to be a shocker. It's not straight up. It is not shocking. It's Highland Spitfire by Mary Wine. It spells Baelish, Baelic and Ailish. Their names are very, very interesting. And they have an enemies to lovers relationship. They are forced into this marriage together because the, I think it's the, the dude, there's some dude. These two families hate each other, right? So the, the Robinsons and the um, Fergusons, they absolutely hate each other and they have to come together and get married so the two families can form like a little, they have to like form some kind of like agreement or whatever, right? So they have to like come together. So these two people are getting married because of it. Um, and they have to get married because if they don't, both of the dads will die. So the dude will like kill the dads. So they're like, hey, I don't really like you, but like, let's do this. Let's just, let's just see and like go with it. And like, so like our heroine is put in a situation where no one likes her. Everyone can't stand her. And she has to like fight and like show that like who she is and earn their trust and earn like their respect. And it's so beautiful because not only is she earning their respect and like showing that she can be a good, contributing member to this like family but also they are falling in love with each other and their chemistry they're fighting it they absolutely are fighting their chemistry and they are so freaking 
beautiful. I love them so much. Their enemies to lovers relationship worked so perfectly because they're enemies because they have to be and like they stop being enemies because they don't want to be necessarily and like she is such a like sassy and like amazing heroine and like he is just like here for it and I love it. It is so amazing. If I've not talked about this series enough, don't worry. I will keep talking about it in 2021. I'm planning on finishing the series this year. I love it so much. So the last book that I want to talk about, and we will talk about my non-romance favorites in another video. Are we shocked? My favorite book of the year, The Dugout by Megan Quinn. Now listen, I love this book so much. I've never, ever... <laughs> thought that I would be sitting here telling you that this sweet friends to lovers book is my favorite book of 2020 but here we are so listen this all is Carson and Millie they actually have an encounter uh, at the beginning of the story where they say like they're they're not like the best to each other they have like a very bad like first impression of another, the other one and Millie is studying to uh, be like a baseball trainer like she wants to train baseball players that's like that's like her goal she wants to be a coach she wants to train baseball players she loves it she's trained all her brothers she has worked with all her brothers like this is like her dream right and Carson who is our hero actually had an injury where he had uh it took him out of a year essentially of playing baseball and he is coming back and his swing is horrible so this is his senior year his swing is awful. He cannot connect the bat, like he cannot connect the bat to the ball. And Millie sees it. She watches him and she's like, hey, I know what's wrong. And she pulls a video up on her phone and shows him exactly what he's doing wrong. And she's like, I will help you. And they develop a friendship as they are working together and she's helping him develop his swing and like get his game back. It is so cute. I love it so much. The story is just adorable. These characters are adorable. I cried during this story because I just love them so much and they they just they really deserve their HEA and I'm not saying it's a slow burn but I am saying that they have to somewhat earn their HEA like they have a a long road ahead before they can be together and they take their time learning each other as friends before they actually have a sexual or a romantic relationship and I really really loved that about them and I just loved watching them come together and be in a relationship and watching them like come past the hardships that they have to face. Uh, there are sugar warnings for loss of a loved one in here. Um, I just I love this book. I love it so so much and I really recommend it and I don't I don't have any coherent thoughts on this one either like as we have progressed through this list my thoughts have went from like actually in depth and actually make sense to I just love this book please read it it's so freaking good like it's so cute it's a baseball romance it's a new adult romance this cover is beautiful I just just please read it that's that's what I'm asking you just just go check it out and see what you think about it because I think it's worth reading and I love it so freaking much. Those are my favorite romances of 2020. I, I, I'm just so happy that I have such a good list of romances for 2020. Narrowing this list down to what I was able to narrow it down to, which is I think 11 books, was absolutely insane of the 125 that I read. So please uh, feel free to read any of these books and, and just check them out. I love them so much. I cannot be happier that I read these books this year. And I cannot wait to see what I read in 2021. Let me know what your favorite book of the year was. Let me know if any of these made it onto your favorites list because I would love to know and I would love to talk about them. So all of the links to these books are in the description. And if you wanna be my friend on any other platform, my social links are down there as well. And I will chat with you all in my next video. Bye everyone.